Okay. Um, hi, good morning. This is Amy with the Iroquois Public Library. We are hosting today Gentle Yoga and Meditation with Jim Pochedli. Um, we're happy you could join us. Um, we're going to be hosting again next Saturday on the 20, May 22nd, if you can join us. And we'll, I'll turn it over to Jim now to get started. Thank you, Amy. Um, thank you all for joining us today in this beautiful May day. And uh, as usual, I have some, uh, first of all, I guess I should uh, say namaste and, and thank uh, the library, our wonderful Erie Library for uh, making this all possible. And it's a wonderful resource we have over there. And I have some more things. I'm always looking for ways, inexpensive or very in, in, or, or even free ways to um, help you in your quest to be happier, healthier, and and live a more wholesome life. And we do have someone joining us. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, uh, just to remind you that if you're not familiar with it, we have this great book called The Melatonin Miracle. It's available at the Erie Library. And uh, it's really something you should read to realize the value of this wonderful, um, wonderful supplement that you can take. And I, I found another book, uh, another couple of books today, or these last few days too, that I want to share with you. And uh, one of them is The Longevity Paradox. You might want to write this one down. Stephen R. Gundry, MD, a very wise and uh, well-educated man who's really uh, has, uh, after my own heart, and so many of these great uh, doctors and wise people are, are coming to realize that the answer to good health is not drugs and surgery. They should be the last alternative, and you can avoid them, and to live a healthier, happier, longer life if you uh, learn how to select the right foods and avoid the uh, standard American diet, processed foods, too much animal products, too much sugar, and, uh, and not enough fruits and vegetables. And, and you wanna read that. Stephen R. Gundry, Longevity Paradox. And here's also something that a medical doctor, Norman E. Rosenthal wrote uh, called Transcendence. And again, gives the value of meditation, his own experiences, and it's really a nice read to inspire you. And uh, that's really what this class is all about, really, and just ways that you can learn to uh, enhance your life and to push you along the spiritual path, hopefully, if that's something that you're at all interested in. But I know you're at least interested in enhancing your life, being happier and healthier. And so this is what these books are all about. You might want to check into that and uh, attend these classes. And uh, you're, you're not, uh, you're going right the right way. And instead of just sort of uh, going along with uh, whatever comes along, you, you might end up with what a statistic of all the cancer, diabetes, Alzheimer's, all these other bad things that are not inevitable. They, they're just a pandemic, really, a real pandemic, uh, because of uh, the unhealthy habit, the eating habits and, and uh, the pollution in the world in these, these days. So uh, just, just word to the wise. Okay, and along those lines, I'd like to talk about uh, the topic today is the kingdom of heaven is within you. This is a, a statement in the Bible, and it's a very, uh, very, goes right along with the yoga philosophy. Uh, a little story I want to tell you, just to kind of illustrate this whole situation, is uh, there was this man, and uh, he was not very well off financially, lived in a, just a small hut with a, a, a mud floor and just eking by. And his only source of income was he would go on these adventures trying to find treasure. He would go everywhere, but he heard and 
dig and you can look and you can uh, rent uh, boats and go out and try to find sunken ships. And he wasn't very successful, but he just had a little enough success to eat by to pay for his journeys and to uh, make a small living. He wasn't very happy, but he made it a little bit and then finally inevitably he passed away. And his friends didn't know what to do. There was no, no, no inheritance, no, no estate left to uh, pay for his funeral. So they decided to just dig a hole in his hut, his mud hut floor, and bury him there. So they began to dig and dig and dig. And lo and behold, they found a fabulous treasure chest full of gold coins jewels and everything you can imagine. Just a huge treasure chest right there in his mud hut. So this is the lesson for today. We look everywhere for happiness. We find little bits of it here and there, but we don't find unlimited, unchanging happiness. We find transitory bits here and there. And this keeps us going. Sometimes we go down really dead ends that we, even though we get a little bit of temporary happiness, it ends up in great suffering if we're not careful. That's what I'm kind of uh, warning you against here. But we really neglect where the true uh, essence of happiness lies and right within us. Okay, now you might say, what, what, what in my foot? In my ankle, you know, in my, in my shoulder. No, the body and the mind are within us too. When I speak about us or you or I in those terms, what I'm speaking about is that infinite consciousness. So remember that open secret? Nothing exists but that infinite consciousness, that infinite existence, that infinite love which is the source of all this expression, which we call life. And it lies within each one of us, but we've identified and we become associated with the outer experience of the mind and body. And these are not uh, the ultimate reality. They're temporary realities. Some people even call them unrealities. But they have a certain reality, isn't it, that they're the expression of the ultimate reality, but they're not the ultimate reality. They are, but they aren't, in a sense. But the ultimate reality is uh, within and beyond. So this world which we experience is really within that infinite consciousness. And our true nature is that. So when I say you contain the universe, the world is within you, not you within the universe. And is that you've made the mistake of identifying with the limitedness, but your true nature contains the universe and is beyond the universe and is the source of everything. And this is this infinite kingdom of heaven which lies within each one of us. Here's another little story for you. And this is really what this class is really all about. Okay, there was a uh, very, again, a very in, impecunious, a long word, but just another word for uh, lacking of financial well-being, a uh, woodcutter. And he made his living by just going off into the woods and cutting wood, trees and wood, and, and calling it in this town and selling it. And obviously, that's not a very healthy way here, or not a very way to get very wealthy, because which is very common and it's not worth very much, but he made a little bit of living at it. He was happy with it, but he wasn't really getting rich or anything. So one day he ran into a mysterious man and he said, go further, go further. He thought, well, what the heck? He went a little further into the woods and he discovered ah, a whole forest full of sandalwood trees. You know, sandalwood trees are worth a lot of money make incense and all kinds of fancy furniture out of them and everything. They're very they're worth a lot more than just firewood. So he was very happy. He started cutting up his fire his sand of wood and hauled it back to town and, and he was doing a lot better. And as he went back to get more, the same mysterious man said to him, Go further, 
go further. So he said, okay, he looked up the horse, so he went a little further, and lo and behold, there was a copper mine. So he starts gathering up all this copper, it's just worth a lot of money, and took that back to town. Now people are glad to get that, they could use that. So he was even better off from that. And of course, you know, the rest of the story, the man could go further and find a silver mine, and go further and find a gold mine. So finally, he just became very, very rich because he listened to the man. And so, in a sense, I, and maybe others that you'll come across in your cosmic romance with the infinite, is telling you, go further, go further. Don't, ex don't just uh, uh, experience this, the surface of life. Everything is uh, not what it seems on the, on the surface. We experience the ups and downs of life, and we get by a little bit here and there. We have a little bit of happiness here and there. We suffer a great deal. So if we go further, meaning going further and uh, start our, our yogic practice, our spiritual path, and uh, so that these postures, people get into these. And this is kind of like the sandalwood tree. They find great value in them. But if you don't keep going further into your practice and uh, the other practices that I, I recommend, you know, really uh, like the eight limbs of yoga, which we spoke about, and this will bring further and further value to your life and more and more fulfillment into your life. So this is the key to real happiness and to, and this is what yoga is really all about, finding that that treasure right within your own uh, mud floor, <laughs> your own, your own uh, in the finite being re resides this infinite source of everything. Everyone and every being should respect it. And that's why we say namaste is an expression of that infinite consciousness. So within all beings, whatever their uh, state, and color or gender or nationality. So we should respect all beings and they're all expressions and within each one of them lies this treasure. But the human, the human nervous system is so evolved that we can go further. And we can experience the ultimate reality within each one of us and bring that out and live that and bless the whole creation with our existence by being uh, open and uh, involved in awakening to our true nature. So this is what this class and what life is really all about. So I honor you for being pioneers and to, although there's many that have gone before you and we should really thank them too. And this is where all this, this ancient wisdom comes from that I'm just transmitting to you that, that the, uh, so th these are the people that are saying, this is where to dig, but you have to do the digging. I can point you out to it. Other, other people can point out and help you along the way. You have to dig. We give you the place, we give the shovel and uh, tell you uh, th this is what we have to do. You know, it's really, you already are that, but you just have to dig, get the, get the dirt out of the way. And uh, what's already there will come to light. And uh, this is what you need. You've only just sort of overlooked it because of all the dirt and because you're looking for it in all the outer uh, adventures that we have in life. So uh, let's go ahead then and sort of dig within ourselves, remove the, uh, the clouds, really. It's not even uh, that heavy as much as dirt. It's just getting, getting the clouds and the clouds will pass, but uh, we just do this to sort of help the whole process. So let's go then and uh, further and further into the depths of our being. And we start that by just sitting comfortably, okay? And uh, in a yogic pose is ideal. This is why these poses were invented. And of course, uh, 
most of you will start maybe the half lotus or the easy pose, whatever is comfortable for you. You've been in a yoga before, you know what I mean? If you've seen it, so uh, come to an easy yogic posture. And uh, hands and chin mudra. That is to help to uh, bring the energy more within and to focus the mind on just the inner peace, letting go of all the outer distractions just for now. It's not that we have to give up our outer experiences, our outer responsibilities, no. We find that kingdom of heaven and we enhance our outer experiences. So there's no reason to run away to a cave. Just you have to give your go to the inner cave once in a while and then come out and enjoy the outer experiences even more. So you're not giving up anything, you're just being a little bit more uh, discriminating in your outer experiences and more. Uh, determined in your inner, more regular in your inner experiences. And then you'll find that they're all one. So let's rest in that oneness. Let go of the outer for now. Watch your breath. The breath is the conduit for that expression of life, which we call the life force, <clears throat> prana or shakti, whatever you call it. It's vital. It is the vitality within the body, the vitality within all that we experience, the vitality in the mind, which makes everything alive and is the essence of life. And the breath is the expression of that in our particular bodies. So let's watch that breath because the mind and the breath are also the same thing. Everything is the same thing ultimately. The mind and the breath are expressions of that oneness, and they give rise to the manyness. So to come back to the oneness, we bring them together, and they together sort of calm each other as we watch our breath. Instead of the many-faceted, we come back to the source of all the multifaceted by focusing on the breath and focusing the mind, which is an expression of another word really for consciousness when it settles down to its, to its more expansive state in that oneness state. So just focus on the breath. And let's go ahead and deepen the breath. You all know the full yogic breath. If not, I'll just sort of go through it with you as we breathe out deeply and completely and fully in the tummy. And then let the breath stay out for as long as comfortable. When you need to breathe, allow the abdominary to expand first as you breathe into the deepest part of your lungs and then into the middle. <clears throat> and upper part of your lungs. And when we get to the, <clears throat> to the top, hold the breath and apply the bandhas, the locks. Put the chin lock down like this, and tighten up the glottal area, pull the tummy in, and tighten up the bottom. Okay, pull that up and tight on the bottom there. So the top, the bottom, and the middle are all locked and that life force is contracted and absorbed much better. And it also helps to really stop the mind, as you might notice. And then when you release, the, when the breath stops, the mind stops. As you notice, the breath and the mind and the body are all connected. When you run, you know, when you think a lot, the breath is up. When you calm the mind and the body, breath settles down too. So let's go ahead, by using the breath, we can calm the mind and body. So let's go ahead and continue that way, breathing out fully, pulling in, breathing in from the deepest to the middle, to the upper, holding at the top and applying the locks a few more times. Make it 
deep and full, almost like seeping in and seeping out very consciously. Don't let the mind wander. So the calming effect. So let's do one more. And then let your breath return to normal but remain in that very quiet space. Very good. So now remaining in that quiet space and enhancing that quiet space as we go along, stretching and massaging and enhancing the life force within our, our body vehicle, we will be able to enhance our experience of that peaceful inner, inner contentment. Good. So hands in chin mudra. Let's go ahead and start with our uh, head rolls. Let the head hang back very gently and consciously and with the breath roll right back left all around. Any way that feels comfortable for you, stretching and massaging, releasing tension in your head and, and your neck area. Good. And now shoulder rolls up tight. As we tighten, then we can relax even more as we stretch our shoulders back down and release. Good. So let's go ahead up tight once more and then forward down release and feel that relaxation and go ahead and roll your shoulders and your head a little bit more to stretch and massage and release that tension so that everything functions and flows just so much better. Wonderful. And let's go ahead and stretch our arms out like this and bring our shoulder blades together, together. Hold at that max point. Feel that stretch. Very good. And that up, 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 up. Very good. Twist to the left and down, 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 down. Up, up, up. Great. And then sitting back up. <clears throat> Deep breath as you stretch up again, and this time to the right as we twist to the right and bring the right elbow down and stretch that left elbow up, up, up. Wonderful. Sitting back up now, bring our left elbow around and the right elbow over. See how straight we can make them. If you can't get quite together, just do the best you can and then see how far you can bend forward. Just a reminder, listen to your body and just go to what feels right for you. And don't feel bad if you can't do every pose perfectly at first. And that's the whole process of, of gradually, like we have to gradually find our way until we're able to do these poses better. But, but even just do them as best as you can will bring the benefits right from the start. So, just get how close as you can like this, straight as arm as possible, and then bend forward from the waist. Great. And then sitting back up, stretch your right hand forward and take your left hand and squeeze and release. And then move down, squeezing and releasing, focusing and breathing. Always focusing, breathing, 
and work your way down under the arm into the chest and heart, always into the chest and heart. Great. And then pull back on the fingers and work your way over the top of the arm, squeezing and releasing, focusing and breathing over the shoulder and into the heart and the body. Left hand now, and the same thing, focusing, breathing, enjoying, experiencing, and working your way down into the heart. Pulling back on the fingers now. Great. And then on the top of the hand, squeezing, releasing. Very easy but it have a very nice effect throughout your body to do this into the heart. Now the bottom of the right foot, massage the bottom of the right foot and focus and breathe. Get every little part there with your thumbs and with your fingers, get the top of the foot so that the whole foot gets a nice massage and flex that foot, it'll feel so much better. And then work your way up the leg with both hands, squeezing and releasing. Same way, same good experience as you breathe and focus. Left hand comes in front, right hand comes behind. Get those midsections, which will benefit from the nice little stimulant there with your fingers and uh, work your way up into the midsection, into the heart. And then on the bottom of the left foot, same thing. Thumbs on the bottom, fingers on the top, and massage the left foot. Something that is a really good thing to do whenever you get a chance. But right now, just give it a good shot, and then flex that foot, work your way up the left leg. <laughs> Don't forget to breathe deeply and focus on what you're doing. Okay, just right now, just be here now. The right hand in front, the left hand behind, and the midsection is uh, being massaged nicely again up and into the heart. Great. Now, with both hands on the top of the head, let's go ahead and massage that area as headquarters for our body vehicle. So I'm gonna really give it a nice little tune up here so it uh, functions well for us in all our outer endeavors and doesn't interfere with our inner quest. So let's go on to the forehead and the temples. Great. And let that area get a good massage, wake up everything in there. And then around the eyes and the eyes themselves, and down into the jaw and underneath the jaw and into the heart. Great. And now again on the back of the head, oh, sorry, on top of the head, and go to the back of the head this time. Down the neck, either side of the spinal column, either side of the neck upper back area, and you know what I mean, it really kind of feel good to massage in there. That area holds in a lot of tension. Sit too much, and look at our computers in that area or when we pick up heavy things or we do whatever we do and that area gets very tense and tight. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. Down into the chest and heart. And then on the lower back of the spinal column, Good, in the midsection, again. And now sit comfortably, hands in chin mudra, and feel that life force. It's appreciating all you're doing for it and all it does for you, which is a way of saying that uh, you're just enhancing the life that is within and that be able to experience more without by helping that flow, that life force flow very better because the world is as you see it and the world 
comes as you are. So when you're feeling better, your world feels better. So that's why we do these postures. So let's begin them now. Hands behind the back. We start with the yoga mudra. Take a deep breath. And as we breathe out, we're going to bend forward like this, as far as we're able to, okay? And if you're able to, keep right on going further and further, and it gets better and better. And then as far as you can go, and then bring those arms forward, Feel that stretch, great. Lean to the right, lean to the left with your left shoulder, and then sit back up. And let's continue by twisting to the left. Take a deep breath, let's do the same thing, but as we're twisting to the left, we're gonna come down towards that left thigh and stretch our right hand way forward. And our left hand goes way back, feeling that stretch, great. And then bring the hand back to the right, I'm sorry, the left knee with the right hand. The left hand stays back there. Twist those shoulders, head to the front, great. And then twist to the right, hands behind your back again, and same thing. But as you breathe out, this time come down towards the right thigh. And the left hand goes forward, right hand stays back. Feel that stretch, breathe into it. And then as you come out, bring that left hand back to the right knee. The right hand stays right where it is. And then just twist those shoulders like this, head to the front and focus on that nice twisting effect all on your spine. And massage and uh, to kind of flex all those nerves in there and then they'll work better. And then let that go and stretch your legs out like this. Back on your elbows. Take a deep breath with the top of the head hang back and then slowly lower to the mat behind you like this. This is called the fish pose. Point your toes away and hands onto your thighs. And now take a deep breath and take your hands and stretch them way behind you, as far as they'll go. Feel your whole body from fingertips to toes getting all stretched nicely. And then bring your hands back to your sides, pick up and relax back to the mat. Great. Now, uh, Let's have the inverted poses. These are a bit tricky for some people, but for those who are able to do them, they're very valuable. So we're just going to stick them right in here. And again, just do the poses you're comfortable with and just do as best you can, and uh, you will be able to go right into these poses. But for those who are able to, bring your feet up like this and then push right up like this and right up into the full shoulder stand. Chin into the neck block, and the uh, feet are straight overhead. Blood is rushing into your thyroid gland. A lot of people these days have troubles with the thyroid gland. It's a very important gland. And uh, this is said to uh, help it to function better. And of course, your whole body is uh, reversed. So you're getting a nice reverse flow of energy throughout your body. And it's really good brings the blood into your thyroid. And then this is the half shoulder stand, which allows uh, the blood, as you'll notice, not just flowing very intensely into your brain. And you'll feel that little lightheadedness up there. And that's because of that. And this is very valuable in many ways. So let's hold this a bit. And then if you're able to, see if you can go all the way or as far as you're able to, towards the mat with your feet like this behind you. Hands outstretched in front of you. And or you can bring your hands overhead by your toes, or you can even grab your knees and pull them down around your head. If you're one of those really flexible people, do the best you can. And then put your hands back to the mat in front of you and slowly lower back to the mat. Good. In between these poses are 
briskly after these poses. Take a bit of time and let your body integrate. Make sure uh, that everything settle back down before you move too much more. So just breathe and relax. Stay in that calm state. And arms outstretched now. Take a deep breath and bring the left leg up like this, straight across to the other side as far as you can. Everything else stays the same. Just go as far as you can comfortably. Feel that stretch the max point and breathe into that. Hold, focus, and release. Back up and down. Deep breath with the right leg. Same thing, right leg comes up and across slowly and consciously. When you get to that max point, feel that stretch, breathe into it, and then just release it as you come back up. Put the foot hang down, keep the knee up. And we're going to reach across with our left hand on the outside of that right knee. We're going to pull to the left as you lean to the right with your head towards your right shoulder and outstretched hand. And pull that knee as far as you can. Then let the shoulder come up and pull even further, but keep the hand down. Good. And then release that. Let's do the same thing with the other knee. Pull that up and grab it with your right hand on the outside of it. Pull it to the right. Lean to the left towards your outstretched left arm. Good. Shoulder up. Pull further. Hold. Breathe. Focus. Release. Keep the knee up and let's grab it with both hands. Let's pull that knee into your chest, head up to meet it. Straighten out that left foot and let's grab it, pull down, straighten out, pull head up and reverse. And pull down, okay. Straighten out, pull down, Straighten out, pull back, head up with the knee. Great. And release, but keep your knees up. And you're all set for the next pose. So with a deep breath, let's push up with our lower back muscles and our thigh muscles and make a bridge between our feet and our upper back. Great. Feel that reverse flex in your lower back as you massage it with your fists. Good. And then wrap your hands around the lower back as you push up even further. Stretch up and back down. Up and back down. And back to the mat. And relax. Great. Take a few moments. A few deep breaths, and when you're ready, sit up a little bit, hand underneath your shoulder, and let's go right up to the inclined plane. Great, right leg up, back down, left leg up, and back down, sitting back up, hands together. Take a deep breath as you stretch up with both hands and then out as you breathe out and coming down, grab whatever you can. Ideally, you grab the toes or the ankles, whatever is ideal for you. Put your elbows down and your head down and go further and further and further. Hold that max point. Great. And then pull that right leg. Back and down into your midsection, hands together, and let's stretch up and out and down as you breathe out towards that right left foot with both hands and head down into that left knee. Okay. And then let's reverse our legs and do it all over again. Up. And out and down. Breathe, focus deeper and deeper and deeper. 
Now reach across with your left hand to the outside of that right foot. Right hand comes behind and you're twisting those shoulders. Right shoulder goes back. Push against that left foot as your left shoulder comes forward. Put your chin right onto that left front shoulder and feel the effect all along your spine. And that stretching effect all along your back. Good. Let's do the same thing. Push that left foot out and stretch with our right hand and our left hand behind. Get that lovely stretching, twisting effect all along our upper body. Focus, breathe, and then just release. Both legs out now. Hands together. Deep breath as we come up and twisting right. That's the right hand to the right foot. And down, 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 down. Down. Hold. And release. And let's do it again. This time to the left as we stretch our left hand down. And as we breathe and focus, bring the rest of our body. Keep that right leg straight. And see how far you can come with your right hand towards that left foot. Great. Now twist your body. Before you come up, just kind of twist and grab that left foot with both hands. Put your head into that left knee. Let's do the same thing with the right foot. Grab it. Right knee. Lift your head. Great. And now let's get back up. Hands together. And do it forward. Deep breath up and as you breathe out, come down forward and to either foot. Very carefully put your head towards the mat as far as you can comfortably go. Do that stretch at that max point. Hold and then release and put both feet together. Pull them into your midsection like this and butterfly those knees down and release and down and release and let's push them down and hold them down there this time straighten up your arms and your upper body so you're getting a real nice stretch in your insteps there hold breathe into that and then push your feet out together a little bit as you bring your hands and your feet and your head down towards them and they all meet together ideally. Close as you can go. Great. Wonderful. And now it's to be a little bit trickier pose here, so watch closely. I'll do it like this so you can see. I'm pushing my right leg under, flat on its side, like this, and then I'm stepping over with my left foot and try to keep the knee if possible and the foot in a straight line like this. That way you can reach across it with your left hand and put your underarm right on that left knee if possible and bring the right hand around behind. Okay, this is difficult for some people. Do the best you can or skip it. Bring that right shoulder back and bring the head to the front. Got it? And then reverse. Reach across with that right hand on that left knee and the left hand this time comes around behind and you're gonna bring that left shoulder back and bring your head to the front. Great. See how wonderful that twisting effect is? So let's do it again, just the opposite feet. Left leg under, right leg over, right arm over, left hand behind. Twist, head to the front, and then reverse, head to the front. Great. And then come up into the diamond position. Toes together, ankles apart, sitting between your ankles, hands in chin mudra, and just rest in that silent liveliness of the essential source within us. And just be with that for a while. Watching your breath and just being. You're so occupied with doing and sensing and experiencing that you forget the source and the essence that doesn't change underneath all the changes. 
the yoga just sort of points and gives a little uh, techniques to access that that inner quietness within all the chaotic experiences of life it sometimes can overwhelm us so we need to come back to that quietness and uh, rejuvenate and this is what it's all about so hands behind the back deep breath and top of the head comes to the mat and hands far forward feel that brush blood rushing into your brain as you breathe and experience that, switch to the right and left, way forward, and then just sit back onto your haunches, hands by your ankles, turn your head and just relax again. And breathe. Good. No hurry. No pressure. Just breathe. Everything's good. And then when you're ready, get back up for the next pose, which is another twisting effect. And this one, we're going to balance on our left hand and knee. Right hand goes flat in front of us onto the mat. This allows this right leg to very carefully stretch straight back. Keep your upper body and your left elbow locked up like this. Don't bend forward. And then you're able to release this hand, come around behind as far as it can go, and twist that right shoulder like this as far as it will go. And then bring the head to the front like this. And in between, you're caught in that really stretch and flex. So breathe and focus on that. That will enhance the effect by focusing and breathing and experiencing that. And then when you're ready, let that go. Bring the right leg back. We'll do the same thing with the left leg this time. Right hand on right knee. Left leg goes straight back. And you end up with your left knee and foot balancing behind you. You're balancing on your right knee with your right hand, that elbow is locked. And then this allows this hand again to come around and twist those shoulders like this. You end up in this beautiful and valuable pose. So hold and breathe into it. And then just put both hands flat and both legs back. And you're all ready for the cobra pose. So take a few deep breaths. And when you're ready, let's come right up into the cobra, sticking your chin out and your head arches backwards. Up, up, slowly. Kind of roll your spinal column by bringing your head back. And that's leading the parade in your shoulders and your chest. Again, help but follow. And finally, your tummy and your belly button are all that's left on the mat in your midsection. So kind of pushing down into the mat, bring your head up even further, and bring your feet up behind you like this. Feel that all along your spine. Stretch your head to the right and left, and slowly back down to the mat. Very valuable pose called your cobra. And, uh, it's a really nice thing. So take a few minutes afterwards and let it go. Good. Now this next one is very intense. And it's a very powerful for your whole body. A lot of athletes do it. It's just so good. So we're going to stretch our arms forward and bring our feet up. And we're going to rock like this on our midsections. Okay? sometimes called the boat. You gotta rock your boat and really strengthen your whole muscular system. Good. And then reach back, grab your ankles, come up into the bow like this and see if you can rock your bow. Most people have a difficult time with that. So don't worry. Just hold your bow if that's easier for you. 
and then pull down those ankles, keeping your head up, and then relax back to the mat like this and let everything go. Great. Okay, after a well-deserved rest, we're ready for our next pose. And we're all set for it. It's called the locust. And if, for this, we have our hands underneath our thighs, either flat or in a fist. And we take a few deep breaths. And this one, we hold the breath in throughout the pose. So first of all, we take a few deep breaths. Then hold the next one in and bring that right leg. First, we'll just do the right leg. Up, 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 and back down. Take another deep breath and the same thing with the left leg. Up, 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 and back down. And now prepare yourselves because we're going to do both legs together. Take a deep breath and push up with your arms and your lower back muscles. Let's see how high you can bring those feet. Great. And then slowly back down and relax. Very good. Now up onto your all fours and back onto your haunches like this with your arms stretched forward, chin to the mat, and feel that lovely stretch in your shoulders. And then back onto all fours for what's called the cat flex. We're gonna arch our back like this, like a cat, and bring your head down as you breathe in, and then reverse, midsection down, head up as you breathe out. Simple enough. Let's do that a couple more times. Ready? Two, and three. And then the donkey kick. Breathing in, bring your left knee into your chest, and your head down to meet it. Breathing out, stretch your left leg up and back and your head up like this. And then again, together, breathing in, apart, breathing out. Together, breathing in, apart, breathing out. Okay, other leg. Together, up. Together, up. Up and bring that right leg up like this and kneel up. Hands together like this and take a few moments and let everything settle. Then taking a deep breath, reach across with your left elbow behind with your right and twist those shoulders head to the front. Great, another lovely twisting effect. And then bring your hands together and stretch forward and arch up like this. And then leave your right hand out there and see if you can grab that left ankle and pull it forward like this. Great. And let's reverse our legs. Left leg up, right arm across. Let's go ahead and do that twist again, but this way from this side and focus and breathe and then release. And the same thing, stretching forward again arching up and pulling that ankle as you stretch forward like this again. Hold, breathe, and then put both hands down, both feet together, grab your ankles, head into your knees. Great. And then slowly standing back up, feet shoulder width apart, hands on your thighs, and then bring your hands together. And let's continue stretching way behind us like this with your hands over your head. Great. Go to the max point and then back, standing with your hands together like this. Into the, what we call a mountain pose. We're going to stretch overhead like this with both hands and make ourselves into a steady, very high mountain. Great. Then bring both hands down and straight back together and bend forward. And have a nice stretch. Bring the hands forward like this and release and standing back up together with your hands again. 
And again, take a few moments and feel the nice effect of all that stretching throughout your body. Left foot goes forward now, right foot back. You're going to bring both hands behind your back together. And you're going to stretch back with your head like this, and then a wide arc as you take your head straight towards that front knee like this. You're going to want to go straight as far down as you can go, and then carefully and slowly bring it back up. Let's do it all again, but with the right foot forward. Left foot back, lean back, and slowly arch forward far as you can go. Great. And slowly stand back up. And the left foot goes forward. Right foot stays up to the right where it is. Arms bend, uh, you're, you're straighten your arms like this so that you're parallel to your thighs, and uh, I'll do it this way so I'm facing forward I guess, right? And then we're going to bend forward from our, from our hips towards our left ankle with our left hand, and your right hand is overhead like this, and you're looking up at it like this. Okay, and then bend forward from the ankles and stretch the right foot back and the right arm forward, great. And then behind your back, we're going to shoulder back, head down, and then ankle, right foot forward, grab your ankles, elbows inside, head down, good. Hands together, head further down, hold, and then hands together, and let's stretch overhead, and do the same thing towards the right. Yes. Swing so mill down towards that right ankle, looking up at your left, and then down all the way with your right hand flat inside the right foot. Left foot goes back, right left arm goes forward like this. Grand as far as you can. <laughs> and then behind your shoulder, shoulder up, behind your back, shoulder up, head down, and then again, put your right foot forward, grab both ankles, elbows inside. And head down. Great. And then hands together, head up. And then hands together and stretch overhead one more time. And back to the starting position. But all stretched out and ready for the next poses. So take a few moments first and just relax. Great. Stay in that quiet space, undistracted from anything. Just be and enjoy. Good. So now we will do the. How are we doing on time? Yeah, we better finish up with the warrior pose. Left foot out, right foot back, like this, and we're going to bend that left knee. Into the warrior pose, stretching that left arm forward. Great. And then both together and ankle up like this. Great. Let's do the other side. And same thing. Touche forward and then arch up. Great. And then hands on your knees for the stomach lift. <laughs> Very good. Feet together, grab your ankles, head into your knees. Hold. Feel the effect rushing into your brain. This section getting a nice massage, stretching those legs. So hold this as long as comfortable. And then let's sit back to the mat, put your knees up, grab those ankles, fall back to the mat. And let's go a few rolls to the right and left, just for good measure. And then 
pull those knees into your chest, tighten up your whole body, and stretch your legs out, and just totally relax back to the mat. Very good. So we're going to play a little tape here. And, uh, Just lie back to the mat. Totally relax. Breathe, focus, feel the flow of energy, healing and really giving life to your whole body vehicle and you are the consciousness aware of the life and the objects within it and uh, the life force flowing and creating the uh, awareness the, the objects within the mind within the body and so just let the body be, and let that life force flow, and even enhance it by just focusing on the ankles. If you feel any tightness or tension in those ankles, toes, calf muscles, just let them go. You don't need anything right now. Just relax. So let that life force flow into your knees. Focus on your knees, your thighs, underneath your thighs, in your lower back, buttocks, midsection. your whole body, your lower body especially, relaxing, soothing, floating, and just enjoying being, breathing, focusing lightly. your chest, your upper back, arms, and shoulders, through your whole upper body, releasing any further tension you may still be holding. Your whole body just floating, soothing, relaxing. Feel your neck, your jaw, relaxing, your tongue, your lower back of your head, your neck, behind, your face, eyes. Feel these areas beginning to closer and lighter and relaxed.
Very gently, taking plenty of time, no hurry, when you're ready, very gently, come to a seated pose. For meditation. Now, before we meditate, let's do a few full yoga breaths just to really tap us off so that we can just sink even deeper, further into more prosperous regions of our being. Bring that out into the town, celebrate the glory of that fullness. So let's go ahead and do a few full deep breaths, breathing out completely, slow 
slowly and fully holding the tummy in at the end, leaving the breath out until you're ready. And then breathing in from the tummy first, and then to the middle and upper part of your lungs. Make it slow and conscious, seeping in. And then apply the locks and hold that life force within your nervous system. Let it do its thing and hold and notice how that really enhances the vitality of your body and quiets your mind incredibly. And then release those locks and breathe out longer than you breathed in. Very slowly and completely breathing long out. Pulling the tummy in at the end. And letting all the breath out of your lungs. Pulling it out and then breathing again the same way in. Let's do a few more like that. Don't strain, very smooth and easy, seeping in, seeping out consciously. Okay, finish when you're on and do one more. And let, let your breath return to normal. But remain in that very relaxed but awake state. Very good. And now, this is all you have to do, really. But to prevent the mind from wandering, or to give the mind something not to wander on, we're going to kind of use a little help from our friends in the form of a mantra. Okay? And we use the mantra like this. And the mantra is, first of all, hum on the in-breath and sa on the out-breath. But just however it wants to go. It doesn't have to be very precise, or very loud, or whatever it feels comfortable for. Just kind of float on the mantra, on the breath, effortlessly. Just be with the mantra. If it wants to fade away, that's okay. If you find yourself on a thought, that's okay. When you become aware of the thought, that you've slipped off the mantra, off the breath, to the thought, that's the time to just gently slip back onto the mantra and begin the process again like that. So, so it's going to be like that, just going deeper and then finding yourself out and then coming back, coming back back and just let it happen like that effortlessly just when you find yourself thinking come back to the mantra come back to the breath don't fight it just take it easy and comfortably effortlessly
Slowly begin to come out of meditation. Keep your eyes closed for a bit longer. Take plenty of time. Never a good idea to come out too quickly from meditation unless you have to. And then try to go back a bit because you might feel a bit jagged if you've gone too fast. Just like jumping up after a full night's sleep, you know, it's not a good thing. Come out very slowly, take your time. No hurry. And thank you all for joining us today. We have two more classes yet for our big break. And then we'll probably be rescheduling in the fall, probably in the evening. Seems like Saturday doesn't seem to work for a lot of people. We've lost a lot of our regulars and sort of decided to go into the evening, perhaps in the fall. <clears throat> but for now, we still have two weeks left and we hope you'll join us uh, until the end of May. The last day of May, I think, in fact. So uh, close to it. So close. So uh, thank you so much for coming.